In today's video, I've got 5 facts about Fafnir from the series Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid slash a character analysis video. We will be going over Fafnir's bio, personality, backstory, and more. If you say anything, I'll kill you. Now, if you enjoy these fact videos, make sure to smash the like button and share this video with a fellow fan of the series. For more weekly anime character fact videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you do not miss a video. Of course, if you want more 414 videos, why not head over to my Patreon where I have some exclusive videos, monthly hangouts, and early access to these videos before anyone else. As always, a quick warning that there will be spoilers, so just a heads up. Anyway, with that being said, grab yourself a beverage, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. Fafnir is one of the supporting characters in the series. He is a male dragon and the roommate of Takia's. He is respected by the other dragons as Toru refers to him as Mr. Fafnir. Now, the name Fafnir actually comes from North mythology as there was a dragon that goes by the same name who is the son of a dwarf king. Fafnir made his debut in episode 3 of the anime and chapter 8 of the manga, though his voice was heard on the telephone to Toru in episode 1 and chapter 3 just as Lucas was. Appearance-wise, in his human form, Fafnir is described as a handsome young man. Now, the main thing that stands out about the Chad that is Fafnir is his constant look of zero fucks given. The guy always seems to be unimpressed by everything and everyone around him when he is outside of his, um, let's say comfort zone. This is a guy I'm sure many people find relatable. Going back to looks, his hair is long, straight, and jet black in color. It is worn down in a loose ponytail with his bangs covering his right eye to give him that proper emo edgy like look. And a quick fun fact about Fafnir, but he is actually the only dragon in the series that has not featured his horns or tail. Attire wise, Fafnir is always seen wearing his black butler attire that he combos with a grey cravat because our guy is just that much of an MVP. He also wears really tiny glasses that rest on the tip of his nose just to let everyone know that he can pull off class. Fafnir is just built differently. As for his dragon form, Fafnir is a huge black dragon with multiple pairs of deep red eyes. And when I say huge, his dragon form is 20 meters tall. He also has another form and is the only dragon in the series to have more than one form. This other form of his is a humanoid one. This thing is monstrous in appearance with a huge build, purple skin, two horns, and the same deep red eyes, and his mouth has many big, sharp fangs. Personality-wise, Fafnir is an absolute legend and an absolute joy to watch, and again, the true MVP of Dragon Maid. He is able to convey a mood, to display his emotions all without speaking a word. A truly relatable character, and you just love to see it. Definitely one of the best there is. Fafnir has a somewhat calm and collected demeanor about him, but that's mainly down to his not caring attitude. He has always been that of a solitary figure, and he has always harbored a truly strong hatred for the humans, especially at the beginning of the series, but learns to tolerate one of them after meeting Makoto Takia, who was to be his roommate in the human world. And it's through Takia that Fafnir learns a lot, but the biggest impact he had on Fafnir was introducing him to video games and the otaku culture, to which our boy Fafnir became extremely addicted to. Fafnir is an extremely hard worker if he has a passion for his work, and in this case, it is the aspect of pulling all-nighters on video games. Now, his dragon traits are certainly used to their potential for this line of work, as they do not sleep. Fafnir does have a greedy nature to him, as seen when he was playing video games, but he is also quite picky too, as seen when Takia made a curry for him and he asked if it was mild, whereas he flat out refused to eat soup cooked by Toru because he knew it was spicy. And I don't know why, but the thought of a dragon that doesn't like hot and spicy food just amuses me. I, I don't know about you guys. 
Fafnir's Japanese voice actor is Daisuke Ono. He has voiced other characters such as Sebastian Michaelis in Black Butler, Jotaro Kujo from JoJo's, Erwin Smith in Attack on Titan, and more. Fafnir's English voice actor is Garrett Storms. He has voiced other characters such as Kurato Hiragi in Seraph of the End, Bunny Joe from One Piece, Uraraka's father in My Hero Academia, and more. Fafnir's backstory, like mentioned earlier, he is a pretty solitary being, and as such, a lot of his past is pretty mysterious. However, we do know that Fafnir is the classic stereotype of a dragon that lived most of his life hidden in a cave. Continuing with the stereotype, within that cave, Fafnir was sitting on a lot of gold and treasure that he was protecting. Naturally, the humans would always enter Fafnir's cave to steal this treasure from him. Fafnir understandably hated the humans for this, and it's easy to see why. Like, imagine people constantly invading your home to steal your treasure of hot anime girl figures. I, for one, would deliver many a backhand to anyone who tried. And just, just imagine 414 in his little cave protecting his Kurumi figures. <laughs> Standard. It's just another day for me. Now, a really interesting thing about Fafnir is that it is hinted that he actually used to be fully human himself and later gained the ability to transform into a dragon. Moving forward, Fafnir eventually joins the Chaos Faction as he felt he was a perfect fit for them due to his feelings and, of course, his hobby for making curses. It is here that he meets another dragon we are very familiar with. That dragon being Toru. The two first met when Toru wanted to rest in his cave, to which Fafnir laid down the ground rules by saying that the space they share will be decided by combat and their ability in battle. The two do form a bond as Toru asks Fafnir his opinion about the whole situation between humans and that of the dragons. Fafnir's response was, you know, really what you'd expect of him. He said it was pointless to even think of it, and as dragons they should just do as they please, otherwise they can't call themselves true dragons. Fafnir is one of the most powerful dragons in the series. His strength is, let's say, next level. Yes, as a dragon, he is going to have much more physical strength than that of a human, but Fafnir stands out even amongst the other dragons. Toru herself has said that she has yet to beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight, and I think the only dragon in the series that can beat him is Lukawa. It's not all physical strength and power, though, as Fafnir's main uh, power, I guess you could say, is the potent curses that he creates. The incantation for the curses he makes are that powerful that when written down, even a human without magic can perform these curses. And a throwback, remember that time he set up his own stall at Comic Cat to sell his volume of fully functional, fully lethal curses? Yeah, lucky that no one bought a single volume, right? Anyway, just like Toru and Lukawa, Fafnir has the super rare portal opening skill. And Fafnir has a lot more powers to him, but most of them are still unknown, which is again a nod to the mystery that surrounds our boy Fafnir. But thank you so much for watching my video, 5 Facts About Fafnir from the series Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. As always, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and share this video with a fellow fan of the series. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. Links are in the description. And of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you do not miss future fact videos. As always, a huge shout out to Warwick, Animator22, Brian, Blake, Andrew, BS Tuna, Emelyn, Kivase, Chris, S Talhai, and Zintak for supporting me on Patreon. Don't forget to head out over there yourself to check out the amazing rewards, including a super special awesome exclusive series for Patreons only. But that is it from me. Till next time, my fellow weebs. Peace.